Good evening. It's good to be beside the fire tonight because it's been quite a wild day with fresh falls of snow and we had two bad storms last weekend and it's been quite a lot of damage round about with fallen trees. Now some of you may know that 2022 has been designated the Year of Stories by Visit Scotland and there's one thing that Grand Town and Strathspey has is a rich culture of stories and tales and myths and legends and a few years ago I compiled a book called Strathspey Myths and Legends, a photographic journey, where I visited the sites of the tales and photographed them to try and bring a bit more realism to the stories rather than just the text. So I've taken it one stage further and I've now gone and videoed some of the locations. And if it wasn't for some of the uh, local people who about 150 years ago wrote down some of these stories, they would have been lost forever. And there's one gentleman in particular called Alexander Cumming, who was raised at Tom Bain on the Braes of Castle Grant. And he'd have been brought up in a Gaelic speaking household and he was sat as a boy, he'd have sat by the fire listening to his parents and visitors to Tom Bain, um, absorbing the stories that he heard. And he'd been familiar with the, the places that they were set. So in 1916, he wrote uh, a pamphlet and uh, some of the tales he wrote are quite short but he gives the locations of them and so when you're walking in, in, in the Dava Moor, the Brazer Castle Grant, as far as out as Loch and Dorb, you can visualise the tales that he wrote down um, and if it wasn't for his foresight these would have been lost forever. Unfortunately there's other areas of Strathspey where there's black holes because the, uh, there was nobody local who actually put what he heard down in writing. So um, I'm going to tell you three short tales tonight. They're all set on the Dava Moor. So um, if you're all sitting comfortably, I'll begin. The Water Kelpie of Loch and Dunan. Not far from the road between Grantown and Dava, there are several lochs which of old time were reputed to be the haunts of water kelpies and water bulls. It was currently believed that the water horse and the water bull came out of the lochs and could be seen grazing with the cattle in the evening on the grassy banks of the Annaboard Burn. A short distance from Loch Annelan is Loch Dunan, almost hidden from the site behind the gravelly hillocks. This was a regular abode of the water kelpie. One moonlight night, a Dava farmer was waiting by the side of the loch to shoot wild ducks. Suddenly, there was a disturbance in the middle of the loch, and to his horror, he saw an unearthly looking creature swimming directly to him. He described it being about the size of a calf, and its two rows of vicious looking teeth gleamed in the moonlight. Without waiting for closer inspection, the farmer fled homewards, vowing never again to visit Loch and Dunan after nightfall. Not far from Loch and Dunan is the floating island or Loch Annelan. On Loch Annelan, there's a curious floating island. When the witches held high revelry in their weird rites, especially around Halloween, they piloted the little island to and fro over the loch. It was at once a common sight to drive past and see the wee island in a different position on the loch. Today, it appears to be more landlocked and gradually merging with the bank. But who knows, on a dark, moonless night if the witches are still blowing the floating island on the Dava Moor. There are numerous fairy hills on the Dava Moor. The chief fairy haunt in the Dava, however, was a rounded heathery knoll called Sheen na Cranach near Loch Ellen. Occasionally the fairy women appeared at the houses round about, desirous of burrowing meal. The request was never refused. Once a fairy woman was visiting Anna Board and asked for a baking of meal, which was willingly granted. On the fairy's departure, the good wife expressed her satisfaction that the borrowing was from her meal chest, as the fairies were grand pairs. Everything borrowed was returned at least twofold, and no house which they so honoured ever saw an empty meal gurnel. Another tale of the fairy hills was a thrifty farmer in the braes of Castle Grant was once trenching near a fairy hill. All at once he heard a whizzing noise and a flint arrowhead struck the turf at his feet. 
He preserved the elfin arrow, but seeing he was incurring the wrath of the good folk by digging too near, he prudently left it alone, and the grassy knoll for long remained uncultivated in the middle of the field. Many stories are told of persons who have seen the wee folk of Sheen the Cranach dancing on the heathery knolls. When the golden moon is glinting in the deep, dim wood, there's a fairy piper playing to the elfin brood. They dance and shout and turn about and laugh and shout and sway. The droll folk, the knoll folk, the folk that dance away.